Frank, you're good to go. Okay. I'd like to welcome everybody to Business License Permits Committee of Manhattan Community Board 4. Um, because of the health situation, uh, the governor has issued executive orders permitting us to meet in this remote way via Zoom um, rather than in our, I was going to say usual, but I forgot what the usual is. It's almost a year now. Uh, <laughs> and actually in a room where we could see each other and closer, hear each other and watch each other. Um, we have an agenda. Everybody, I assume, has seen the agenda. We have, I'd like to proceed with the agenda. Um, but first, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Bert Lasman, the co-chair. And who else is on the committee here? I'm uh, Frank Holosubiak, the other co-chair. Twee fam member. Carrie Keenan, member. Wendy Gonzalez, member. Sabrina Riveron, member. Inga? Rob Walker, member. Inga Ivchenko, public member. And Mike? Mike Noble, member. Okay, two of our members are on non-video. Okay, so I'd like to proceed with our item number one on the agenda. Um, just, just to explain to, in case there are new members of the public here, uh, if anyone wants to speak on an application, uh, please raise your hand in the, uh, in the uh, participants list or indicate that in the chat function and we will uh, move you into the meeting at an appropriate time. Uh, and also, as I think Nellie made clear, the, the meeting, uh, as all of our meetings are now, is being streamed live and is also will be up on YouTube uh, after tonight. And I see the face of two additional committee members. Please introduce yourself. Uh, Christine Berthe. Brian Sarkow. Okay, so let's proceed. Item number one is a corporate change, 343 West 14th Street. How Noodles doing business at Madame Ju's Kitchen. Yes, I am Zara Lucas. I represent the uh, applicant. I am not sure. I can't see if they're here yet. Um, it should be uh, Leslie Wang and Rong Zhu. I do not see them in the. Nelly <laughs> Rong Zhu is in the is an attendee. I will move them over. Okay. What was the other name? They'll be together, Leslie okay. Wang and Ron. Oh, Ron okay. is the owner and Leslie Wang uh, works okay. for her. They'll be here shortly. Okay. And besides a corporate change, I noticed that uh, additional tables and additional seats from the previous operation. Uh, I am. I was not aware of that. The application should only be for... Um, should only be for a corporate change. We are not making any alterations at this time. Um, Is there a discrepancy in the numbers? I have um, checked with Nelly. I have the previous steps um, was 14 tables and 56 seats. Okay. And this is for 18 and 70. Capacity is the same. Hours are slightly different. The hours before were 11 to 1, and these, these hours are asking for an hour 12 to 10. Okay. A reduction okay. in hours and an increase in seating. Yeah, it, it shouldn't be a reduction of hours. I think what probably happened there is there, that's probably their COVID hours. 
um, will revert back to whatever the approved hours will be so that they can continue um, operating as is. Um, this is this application, the approval that we're requesting here is strictly for um, a corporate change. Um, if there's any discrepancy with as far as the table seating goes, which obviously they're not utilizing those right now, um, I'll clear that up with my client. And if it's something that needs to be rectified, we'll address that at a separate hearing. Um, for right now- I'm not now, sure what you mean you'll address that at a separate hearing. We'll, well, if, if there's been a change when things get back to normal and they're able to open and operate, if there's a change in the number of people that they wanna have inside, uh, we'll have to file an alteration application to correct that. So that'll mean that we'll have to come back before you. Well, you know, so I'm, not sure, I'm not sure that's right necessary. Um, you know, I guess we can assume that you're asking for the greater number tonight, and then you can let us know uh, sometime before our full board meeting, which is in early February, okay. what, what, what numbers you're looking for. Okay, um, I'll, I'll have them confirm. Um, was, was wrong, were they able to be added to... Yeah, they're at the they're on the screen here. It's not okay. I can't see them, so yeah, they don't have a they don't have their camera on. Okay. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with our procedure, the committee makes a recommendation to the full board, which meets in the first Wednesday in uh, February, and that's where the final recommendation to the SLA is made. So if you have any changes, minor changes like that or clarification, you mm -hmm. need to get it to us before that full okay. board meeting. So we'll, we'll look into that um, so that hopefully sometime this year, if, uh, if it permits um, and they can operate indoors again, we'll have them operating with um, accurate numbers. Um, just to address the corporate change application, uh, it's pretty much, um, it's not a change in method of operation. It's not a change in management. Rong Zhu has been the owner of the business since um, the, in the inception, it's since they've been open. Um, she is remaining on. What's happening is that she is having, um, uh, we're adding a holding company and um, a new financial investor. And so it's gonna help them consolidate accounting and, and what's not in there coming in as 80%. Um, uh, but as for the day-to-day -day management, there's no change there. Christine, I noticed you had a question. Uh, just want to mention that they mentioned a storm enclosure. Is that uh, accurate? Or if they have one, they should, you know, reduce it to 18 inches? Uh, is that J Julia? Can you... You'll have to unmute. We, yeah, we can't hear you there. So they're asking about um, the storm enclosure, which yeah. you guys have during the winter and whether it um, meets the, the 18 inches requirement. Wrong? Can you? Yeah. Um, there is not clear. Hmm. I think the internet is not good. Hmm. So we can hear you. Sorry. Okay. okay. Um, I do know um, that they do have. Um, or, or they did in the past have a storm enclosure, whether or not it's whether they're using it right now, which they probably aren't. Um, as for the measurements, those specifications, I don't have that, but if there is an existing um, issue with that, that's something that we'll address. Um, yeah, it should be either removed or uh, reduced to 18 inches deep. Okay. Do you know? Do you know um, specifically whether or not it's over eighteen inches, or, or is it just a general? Um, it's very probably above eighteen inches because generally, when it's getting installed by the manufacturer, they install the three feet or four feet. So okay. that's the general guidelines. 
And you should remind, uh, remember that those enclosures are not ADA compliant. So even if it's 18 inches and it's compliant with the city, it still could be a question as ADA compliance. Okay. Um, I am not, we, we were brought on to handle the corporate change. So I'm not so familiar with how things were constructed and, and, and how they stand, but we can certainly um, look into that and have that address if it's an issue. So, so we'd like, would like you to, to, you know, stipulate that you are going to not exceed the 18 inches. Yeah, right. That should not be an issue to have um, to include that. It probably should have been on the. I mean, I don't. I'm not yeah. sure what the. Maybe you can tell me what the questioner said um, previously. Um, but I would assume that they would they would agree with that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Did you want to make a comment, Frank? Uh, no, I'll just wait till everyone's done. Any additional questions from committee people? <clears throat> no, no. Okay. Anybody uh, from the public want to make a statement? Nelly? Anybody out there? No, there's no one with raised hands. Okay. Can do I hear a motion? Uh, wait I'd like second. to make a motion. Okay. And now, Frank. Okay. So, Zara, we're going to add a stipulation that says any storm enclosure will extend no further than 18 inches from the building facade. Okay. Okay. And then if you could also by uh, January 23rd, uh, get us, you know, what, what numbers of tables and seats you want, whether it's the one in this form or the one in the prior form, just okay. one way or the other. And uh, we'll just change the form and you won't have to come back. Okay. And then the hours of operation, right? Which are yeah, not and the hours we're going back to your old up. And the hour, hours, yeah, please revert. To which me. were eleven to uh, to one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Motion. Second. Is there a second? Okay, Ing, do you have Inger? You had a you seconded, it, right? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Present not eligible. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, item number two is 360 West 46th Street, Gift of New York, doing business as EAK Raman. Hi. It's a method of operations change. It uh, looks like seating is increased by five and the hours are changed. Uh, they're asking for 11 to 12, and previously it was 10 to 11, seven days a week. They're asking 11 to 12, Monday through Thursday, and to 2 o'clock, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yes. Anything you'd like to say, sir? I would like to, like, uh, there are many uh, demands from the customers, like, uh, you know, they want to, like, stay longer. Especially like you know, we start like selling like you know Japanese hard liquors like whiskeys and and, and wines and uh, also like you know some type of like a different type of, like a alcohol from like a hard liquor liquor from like a Japan. So then they are very interested and in, like you know stay longer. So that's what we got like a request from the customers. So like uh, yeah, we. I want to extend the hours of like selling that alcohol like in that space. And you already have a full liquor license, right? Yes, yes. We'll be okay. right. I just want to confirm the um, the hours that you want to stay open until 2 a.m. on Sunday. Often, and I only ask because often we have applicants who will say, I would like to be open later on Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night, since those are more like weekend nights and Sunday. We can instead of Sunday. So you do want to stay open that late on a Sunday? Um, yes, because like a Sunday, it kind of like applicants are, uh, I mean, like, you know, many customers want to, you know, kind of have like a stay on like, even on Sunday with some Japanese clients, I mean, like a customers too. So. I mean, like if like a Thursday until two a.m. is possible, then like if we want to request that uh, for now, like uh, just you know uh, three days a week, like it must it can be open until two a.m. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It was on Sunday too. 
Well, I appreciate Wendy clarifying because, um, you know, at least culturally, most people try to get ready for work on a Sunday. So it might be a, a pose a problem to stay open until 2 a.m. Right, right. But then like, the thing is like, we do not play like music loud, like in the, in the restaurant and all the doors are closed all the time. So then um, that might not be a problem. Like, uh, th th that's what I think, but um, yes. I think what Tui is referring to is not so much the neighbors, but your customers who may be wanting to get ready for work the next day and don't want to hang out late on a Sunday, but prefer probably, as Wendy did it in quotes, the weekend begins on Thursday. Thursday. So is it possible to change it to Thursday until 2 a.m.? <laughs> I'm sorry, like I'm just requesting that. Um, and then Sunday? What would you do with Sunday? Sunday, maybe like until like a, uh, 12. Okay, yes. that might be possible too. Or like, do, do I have to reapply for that? Like uh, to the changes of like a method? Oh, we can, oh, we can do it now. We can do it now. Okay. So we make it Sunday <laughs> through Monday, 11 through 12, and Thursday, Friday, and Saturday until 2 a.m. Yes, that'd be perfect. Sunday through Wednesday, right? Yes. Did I, did I say, I, yes, Sunday, Sunday through Wednesday. Wednesday. I thought you said Monday, but. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yes, I did probably say that, but I was reading, I wasn't yeah. thinking as I was reading. Yeah, like, uh, yeah that's good for the neighbors too, like uh, people who live, uh, live yes. in the apartment, like, uh, okay. probably okay, that might be better for them, like a uh, lot of noise from the customers on Sunday nights, that might be disturbing for them. So, okay. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Thank you. So it's Sunday to Wednesday until 12, Thursday, Friday, Saturday until two. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments from committee members? Anybody in the public there, Nelly? No. Okay. I'd like to make Hi, a motion. I'm oh, I'm sorry. I do have a question. Um, Bert, you mentioned that seating will increase by five, but did the floor space change? Why is it increasing by five? I don't, I, I'm not the, uh, <laughs> the guy who puts the tables out. I just see in the original, uh, it said, where am I? 20, uh, 16 tables, 24 seats, and 46 capacity. And in their application now, it says same 16 tables, but 29 seats. All right. I think I stumbled on this too. I think that's a four, not a nine. If you look at the capacity, okay. see the way they make the fours on capacity and maximum numbers on the 46s? Okay, then I stumbled. So I think it's 20. I'll admit that even in public. All right. And I guess I just, I just did want to mention we had one email from a community member asking why a ramen place needed a full liquor license. But I don't think that person realized this place already had a full liquor license and it's about ours. Right. They're changing the method of operation, not the type of license. Right. They already have a full liquor license. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're just changing the hours. We're not changing the number of seats. Nope. Um, do I hear a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Abstaining, present not eligible, it passes. Thank you. And remember, you this goes much. to the full board where the full board makes the final decision. Thank you so much, thank you. Okay. Number three, now here we go to a change in uh, what the agenda calls a class change. It's the type of, liquor li type of license. Uh, so we have 365 West 20th Street, Milk and Hops. It, they're going from a beer and wine license. They like, they're applying for a full liquor license. And their hours are changing. Um, the Sunday to Wednesday, which is 12 to 10, is no change. But on the weekends, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, uh, they want to go to 11 o'clock which is a change from what they have now. Um, applicant? 
I'm Michael Kelly representing the applicant. Anything you want to say, Mike? Sure. Uh, the uh, manager's with us and Brian, the attorney that was here in November, if you recall this application. Uh, we're located at 164 Ninth Avenue between West 20th and 21st Street. This is a change of an eating place beer license to an on-premise liquor license. We've been licensed with that since December 2018. We're also extending the premise to the corner store, which was formerly Lolino. Unfortunately, they went out of business and we rented the spot in December. Uh, hours I thought were staying the same, 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday to Wednesday and 12 p.m. to 11 Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. If I'm um, incorrect on that, we would like the 11 p.m. These early closing hours should put everyone's mind at ease about us becoming a bar. It, there was a problem about the seating last time, but now we submitted a new plan and there's gonna be different seating. I can go through with what I found out about the previous seating, but I'll go through what we're gonna do now. The seating will expand from what we currently have. We'll have 25 tables with 46 seats and two bars. One bar will only have three seats. The other bar will have five seats, 14 tables and 28 seats. And a three bar seat will be in the existing area, which you had a 10 seat bar before. 10 tables with 18 seats and a five seat bar will be in the new area. There's no French stores in the new area. Although we have two bars, one in each storefront, we'll have two less bar seats than we were currently approved for by the SLA. We'll also cut down on large groups at the bar. We'll have background music only. The doors will be closed when music is played. If you recall, Mr. Walker and Ms. Keenan did testify at the last hearing that the place was quiet, even with the doors open. Ms. Vinchenko, hopefully I said your name correctly, testified she has heard noise from the place in the past. So we believe closing of the doors will solve this. We will not have a canopy. We have and will have COVID seating on the sidewalk. We can't have it in the street because uh, the bike lane and the vehicular turning lane. We did submit signatures of support. The community board wanted us to do more outreach. Before I re-notified all the concerned block associations including the Chelsea Block Association, London Terrace Gardens, London Terrace Tenants Association. We tried to call the London Tennis Towers, but when they were unable to get through. So in total, I notified 10 block associations. Travis also got signatures and spoke to many customers who are mostly neighbors and neighborhood people on the street. We're not a destination location, so most of our customers are from the immediate area. If there's any questions or anything needs to be expanded on, we would be happy to do so. Changing hours, by the way, it just applies to Thursday. Okay, I'm sorry. And the opening. It's a later opening during the, during the generally. A uh, quick question. Um, are those numbers post COVID? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. All good. So I have a clarification, if I may. Uh, so you are extending to the store uh, next door. So what was in that location next door? Lolina, I believe it was a gelato store. What? On the corner. What kind of store was that? Uh, gelato, ice cream. Oh, gelato, crispy. Okay. And um, was, was there, I mean, are, is there people uh, living above and uh, are you going to need to do some sound proofing? Uh, we've been there since 2018. We don't know if there's any. I'm talking in a new store, when, as the place you are taking over. That's what I'm talking about. Travis? Well, we're going to be doing construction. I can talk to the owner about it. Uh, since nothing's been built, I mean, soundproofing is going to be um, easy next door. Uh, they played music. They've had like a video running with music in the background. Uh, there is no excessive window or door, so um, there wouldn't be any, there's nothing that you can hear through uh, the one single door that is the entrance and no window is close to anything open. I was concerned, I was concerned about any, uh, any resident above. Um, I mean, there's not going to be, based on being able to manipulate any speakers if there are, 
they wouldn't be in the same spot and it wouldn't be as loud since we have the ability to already have the speakers in this one um, that already doesn't cause issues as we've stated uh, and we're having the doors closed so we can easily put softer speakers at different locations that would not affect any uh, residents above. Okay. We've also been open since 2018 in the other spot and haven't gotten any complaints from noise upstairs from the neighbors. Right. Are they in the same building, the two yes. storefronts? Yes. Okay. okay. Inga, did you want to say something? Yes. Um, I thought so. <laughs> so um, the Gelato Place, I do not believe, has ever had a liquor license. It I is a coffee, coffee shop slash gelato. Um, I don't think it's ever had a liquor license, so I don't know if we want to give another liquor license to an avenue that's getting very crowded with liquor licenses. Um, the second thing is I walked by pretty much every day last week and their sandwich board, which is very large, took up most of the sidewalk, uh, left a small path between the outdoor seating and the front of the building almost had to go single file just to get around the sandwich board. So I don't well, that's something we can easily move and put it inside. So it's facing through the glass. I mean, we still have the eight feet in general for most of the spots. We didn't break any issues there. Well, we prefer that it's not in general, that it's completely. Yeah. It's not an average. It's eight feet, the whole sidewalk. Yes. The sidewalks are getting a little more crowded, of course, with all the seating, which is understandable, but the added planters, obstructions, sidewalk boards, those are really, you have to zigzag around them. And I have a problem with the unlicensed space with so many liquor licenses around getting a full liquor license. Why? Last fall, how many did we issue to places that never had liquor licenses that I objected to, but we, we did them anyway? And this is a restaurant that's been open for almost two years in the neighborhood without any problems. Sorry, we're, it's actually, it should be 2016. We're actually going on our five-year anniversary this week. Yeah, but the uh, beer-wise, we were... Uh, Licensed since December of 2018, so we've been even open longer. It's not I, a new. I think that discussion. I think that discussion doesn't as nothing doesn't reflect on on the applicant yes. uh, at all. <laughs> it's more of a, a general uh, planning of the neighborhood, and um, you know it doesn't mean that anything for the applicant. The applicant c can be very good and has been so. And we also close at 10 and 11 at night. So we're gonna be making a few mixed drinks. It's not gonna be a total bar scene. We're not gonna to have top shelf alcohol there. If somebody comes in, they want a beer, they can have a beer. If somebody's with them that wants a glass of wine, they can have a glass of wine. If somebody's in there that wants a cocktail, we'd be able to serve them. The reason the owner is going for the full liquor is he's had requests before for wine and basic cocktails, not some exotic cocktail. So I Sabrina? think we are, we are hearing yeah, two um, I have a question. Here. So in regards to uh, the space that you're occupying, that you, you were planning to occupy, um, how long has this place been vacant? Since December? Well, we rented it in December. And it is, I'm assuming this is a pandemic. Um, it closed because of the pandemic, the place that it was there? I would we're not a business? We couldn't make enough money to stay open. Okay. All right. So then we have, we have a, 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 a store that is vacant with a restaurant that has no problem with the community. I, I, I don't know what the issue is here. I agree. And I have one more question. So when you have the corner space, are you going to open up on the street and sidewalk around the other, the, the corner? Yeah, there's no front stores on the corner space and we're not changing that. Are, are you the... going to have outdoor seating on that street, on the side street? With the COVID on the side street, no. That's where the entrance to the residential building is. Uh, management wouldn't permit it. 
So the expanded space, if I understand what you're saying, Mike, will have only one entrance. Is that correct? Let me just take a look at the plan. Yeah, the, old, the new location has one front door. No, I'm talking about the unified operation. Will there be one door that I go into? It'll be and then I can choose to go to the right or the left? Two. Or is there two different doors to two different spaces? Two different doors, and then we have the French doors in the middle. People won't be using the French doors. Two, doors. two main entrances. One of the main entrances goes into the new spot, and one entrance exists now. And and I and if I'm I just want to read it. No, so there's there'll be no street seating and no sidewalk seating on the side street. Correct. Would you uh, stipulate to that? Yes. Okay. Bert, I think uh, Carrie's. Carrie, were you with? I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. I just have a quick question, and this may cross over into something that's beyond this application, but um, since it is uh, now going to take up almost the half of that block, um, and you have COVID seating, and if COVID seating then becomes permanent, are we? Will you have to reapply for a sidewalk cafe because that will mean a sidewalk cafe on half half of that block? I'm sorry if that didn't make sense. I hope it made sense. I've done a few sidewalk cafes in my life. Yeah. There's no sidewalk cafes for 2021. So if there was a new sidewalk cafe came, license that came out, we'd be reapplying next year. Right. Okay. Because just so everyone knows the the. It's now going to be quite a big space, and it's pretty much French doors the whole facing um, Ninth Avenue, the whole length of the premises, um, which would be happen. interesting for you know sidewalk cafes if those are open. And you know, I'm just curious what will happen then. My apologies. Right. The uh, new space won't have French doors. It's going to be solid, like it is now. And Carrie, the the issue about. Post COVID, right? Sidewalk cafes versus street dining, right? It's it's for what we're going to discuss later, right. because none of the rules and regs have been written yet, or even thought. Uh, we can't say thought about, but there's nothing in place right now. So not 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 that this is happening, but just I'm asking because if it's sort of grandfathered in, then now we have a half a block of Ninth Avenue that's got a a, a huge sidewalk cafe, basically. I don't know if things will be grandfathered in. Okay. I mean, I, that's my sense. Yeah. That we, we just don't know. And unfortunately, we don't have any say now in the COVID right. emergency seating. Right. That, you know, that can be done as long as they comply with all the rules. So one of the things we're addressing in the letter at the end of the meeting is we think the community and the community board should have some input when these kind of things become permanent. But uh, Bert's right. We, we honestly don't know what's going to happen. So Rob? COVID oh, I'm sorry. Rob, yeah. did you want to say something? I guess not. Christine, go ahead. So could you clarify for me, what is the COVID seating situation right now and what will it be once you acquire this uh, establishment? You have, how many seats do you have uh, and tables you have in front of your establishment. Travis? Um, right now, it's, there's no set seats. We uh, bring out seats as needed while following six foot uh, spacing. So it's not set because um, nothing's standard. It's just spacings that people can either stand in with groups or, um, a chair goes in and it's on the side and but nobody's back to back it's not set what is so, the i mean I'm, i'd like to make a comment about that because groups and standing are not supposed to be part of covid it should be only sitting and six uh, six feet separation they, they have standing corrals in their outdoor shed right that so we can put chairs everywhere and still do it but there's no I mean, for a total number, there is no current occupancy yet. Nobody but, I mean, has a you, CFO what, for their outdoor seating. No, no, no. I'm asking you when you set up your tables, how many tables do you have out there? Uh, we don't have table space. We have 
bars that kind of go around in the U shape so they can okay. sit. Well, so that's not supposed to be this way but mm -hmm. at all. It's supposed to be only chair and, and tables. So I would encourage you to not do that in front, and, and I would like to stipulate you are not going to do that in front of the new, uh, the new place. Have well, what, what constitutes not, not being a table? It just says seat, seating and it being seated at a surface. And it doesn't say that it has to be a table that gets removed or not. Um. I'll, I will talk to Travis about the outdoor seating and the rules. Yes. And send one of my people by there tomorrow to they're show him what he's allowed to do and what he's standing. not allowed to do. They're standing. Yeah, all, all the, the, standing, the standing is not. There's approved. no standing allowed. So they're like. No, but bar. Nobody's standing right now. They're, right. they're standing bar areas. Hey, can, can I point one thing out about outside real quick? They literally have a bike lane followed by a turn lane and a cement um, lane in between the traffic. There is no space for them to ever do uh, like real outside. There's no place for them to go for outside uh, COVID uh, seating or eating. So they're trying to make do with what limited space they have to do it out there. Yeah, but I mean, you know, there are regulations as far as as it, it's, I, I hear you and I agree. We understand we understand that everybody is not treated the same way because of the configuration, but you have to have distance and uh, and and fixed distance. Let's say I, I'll be sending somebody by to talk with him tomorrow about what he can and cannot do. I've done a couple hundred of these outdoor seating things, so. <laughs> I don't believe he understands that you can't have people standing there. Right. That everybody must be seated. Yes. I will send one of my people there. Right. So we'd like we'd like to to you know stipulate that for the new place and the old place. That will comply with the law. That would two help. questions. Yes. That would help. <laughs> yes. Not a problem. <laughs> well, but I think we not just comply with the law. Specify. Which law we're re not? I mean, which law we're referring to? What the issue is that they have to conform to, and yeah. we're talking about the outdoor seating. Yeah, that we can only have tables and chairs and people sitting in them. Right. right. No standing. No bar-like atmosphere. Uh, That's not a problem. Okay. I'm glad to hear it's not a problem. I have two questions. This is go ahead, Tweet. Um, I wanted to go back to um, you said there are no canopies. Does that mean? the current canopy that's there will be removed and the one that's on that was on Lolinos will be removed? Well, we have an awning. A canopy is the yeah. awning-like structure that comes out and has yeah. poles in the sidewalk. So we don't have one of them. It was a mistake on the application. Right. So the, okay. awnings, the awning is going to stay. A canopy okay. is a completely different thing. Okay. The next question I have is, um, you, how many tenant associations you said you reached out to 20? 10. 10. Okay, what's the radius of that, of that, those tenant associations? Uh, we started with the Chelsea Block Association. We did three on the 300 West 21st, 22nd, 23rd Street Block Association, four on the West 400 Block <coughs> Associations, the London Tower, London Terrace Tower Block Association, London Terrace Gardens. Okay, because there's a block association, um, maybe it's too far east. Okay, so uh, yeah, I was thinking about the 200s. 200. On 27th Avenue. Yeah. So you really just did 9th Avenue and then one avenue east and one avenue west, it sounds like, right? The 300s and the 400s, but also the Association of Chelsea, Chelsea Block Associations, which I assume that's what you're referring to, yeah. covers everybody. That's like a coalition. And no one responded? No one responded. Okay. But they were supposed to respond by a certain time? Normally, I get once in a while, I'll get uh, people responding with emails. But a lot of times, I don't. I send in the questionnaire when I, when I uh, notify them so they have a look at what we're doing. OK. All right, thank you. Any other committee members have questions, comments? I was just going to say, if 
if black associations do not have concerns, they typically don't respond to the applicant and don't say anything to us. It's, it's only a few that give us an answer either way, whether it's affirmative or negative. Okay, thank you for that. Nellie, anybody in the public? No. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. Wait, wait a second. Uh, let me summarize Anyways. this. Uh, Mike and Travis, make sure you're okay with this. These are the additional steps based on what I heard. Uh, there will be no sandwich boards, A-frame signs, or other obstructions placed on sidewalk. Applicant will keep an eight-foot pedestrian clear path at all times. There will be no roadway or sidewalk, sidewalk seating on, is that West 21st? What corner are you on? West 20th. 20th. West 20th, okay. And in open restaurants, sidewalk seating, all patrons must be seated in compliance with NYC and NYS guidelines, no standing patrons permitted. Yes. Okay. Rob, did you want to make the res uh, re <laughs> a resolution? Yes, I would like to make a motion to pass with all these current stipulations moving forward. Okay, is there a second? Christine, okay. second. Wendy second also? Two seconds. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? One opposed, abstaining, present not eligible. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you if you want at the uh, full board meeting in February. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. The next and the last three applications before us are new applications, the new, new establishments, and they're all for full liquor license, beer, wine, cider, and liquor. The first one is 412 West 15th Street, Nusret. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Nusret. It's a restaurant asking 11 to 2 a.m., seven days a week. It has a capacity of 236, 71 tables, 170 seats, plus, as they tell us, 16 seats at a kebab grill. That's um, exactly right. Hi, Ben Savitsky of Bernstein Radio on behalf of Newsred FH and NY LLC. They are an applicant for a full on premises liquor license to be used for a new restaurant at 412 West 15th Street. That's between 9th and 10th. It's in meatpacking. It's right across the street from Chelsea Market. Um, the applicant's new restaurant will be an extension of the concept of Nusret, which is a steakhouse that currently operates internationally in the United Arab Emirates, Turkey, Istanbul, other locations, and then more locally, right here in Manhattan, in Manhattan CB5. And it also has a sister restaurant, which is a more casual burger restaurant called Salt Bay. The chef in charge of this menu is Nusret Goki. He is a well-known chef that is better known as Salt Bay. Some of you may have heard of him. Um, the proposed restaurant here across from Chelsea Market will be a steakhouse like the other new threat that skews high end, but there are additional approachable menu options that take from the Salt Bay Burger concept. Um, and then there's some new items like the, the kebab bar that, that Bert mentioned. So I have here with me tonight, and I don't know if they're actually on the screen, um, Al Avici and Stephen Magnus from The Operator. They are fully familiar with the existing restaurants of New Threat this concept as well as the build out of this completely new space. And they can answer any questions that you have about the operation or, or, uh, or what they do at the other spaces. But I just want to quickly run through. Can you move them over? Thank you. I'm just going to quickly run through the application just so, and, and Bert already did a very good job of, of representing it. But uh, what we're proposing is this new steakhouse for repacking. As mentioned, it, it's going to follow in the footsteps of the original new threat um, and the Salt Bay Burger restaurants. It's a, it's a hybrid that kind of finds a sweet spot for a broader audience. So it's not just, um, it, it's not just targeting the high-end clientele um, of Newsred and it's, it's not a casual eatery. So if you look at the menus that we provided and they were, uh, they were on part of page 24 of the packet that we submitted, um, you'll get, get a better sense of what I'm talking about. There's uh, high-end offerings like prime cuts of meat that sell for hundreds of dollars and a wine list that is uh, enviable to many restaurateurs here in New York City. And yet in the same space, we're gonna have the accessible menu of burgers, tacos, salads, and, and meatballs. Um, I also mentioned the kebabs, which is new to the family of New Shred. 
Um, and we think that diners are going to really enjoy a, a designated kebab space. And, and it's called the kebab bar, but it's not a separate stand up bar. It's just a place where you can sit and, uh, and you can watch kebabs being made and, and enjoy a kebab. Um, so, and, and these items, the, the, uh, the burgers and the salads are all prepared with the same quality um, and standard of care that the, the, the other items are. The license space has two floors, but only the ground floor is accessible to the public. And that is where the dining will be. The, rest, the uh, basement is just a kitchen and storage space. As Bert mentioned, there are 71 tables, 100, 170 tables, uh, table seats, one kebab bar with 17 seats and one traditional stand-up bar with 19 stools. That is our only bar in the whole premises. Uh, it's a completely new construction space. Um, it's completely sealed. There are no windows that are operable. Nothing can open. From what I'm told, as new construction, it has been built with some sound attenuation properties. Uh, Stephen could probably fill you in more on that, but I don't even think it's going to be an issue because we're only requesting um, background music. There's, there's no DJ or live music or anything like that here. Um, also, as this is new construction, all the kitchen equipment that's going to go in the basement and also some on the ground floor is completely brand new and state of the art. Um, and that also includes the ventilation system for the, the restaurant, which goes all the way through the 18 story building, all the way up to the roof. We are the highest building um, in the area, so I, I don't anticipate any issue and there's not really any residential um, between 9th and 10th Avenue here. The proposed hours of operation, as Bert mentioned, are 2 a.m. The restaurant does not have any outdoor space and does not expect to have any outdoor space. As constituted, they uh, are planning on opening in the fall of 2021. And uh, I hope that we're out of this by then, uh, but they are not planning on utilizing any outdoor space and uh, they will probably use open restaurant space um, if, if we're still in this mess that we're in right now, but we hope that, that we don't have to. Before we go further, we should get your clients moved into the meeting. It was Al Afchi was one of them? That's correct. And uh, Stephen Magnus. Okay. Now, do you see them? And with that, if there are any questions for me or for Al or for Stephen. This, well, this uh, the, the restaurant you're applying for is located in that new office building that went up on the south side of the street? Brand new office building. It's, it's black. Okay. It's very sleek. And I think it's, uh, it's all office tenants. Uh, right above them, I believe, is Live Nation. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to locate it for myself. Yeah. Any questions from the committee? I see Christine. I have a question. You mentioned you're going to have a vestibule, so you will be uh, uh, ready to stipulate that it will be 18 inches maximum. Um, Stephen, can you explain that? Oh, they were going to have a vestibule. The vestibule that we'll have will be inside the building that already exists in the space. Oh, it's, so it's, it needs to be corrected on the application, that's all. We can correct that. Oh. It's, inter it's interior. It's not. It's right. not interior open. vestibule. So it says yes and yes on both. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have two two uh, two doors into the space. Both of them have vestibules, but they're inside the space. So, okay. so, so yeah, you wouldn't be using what we call the storm enclosures, those plastic things. No, that go no up it's the storm enclosures. And Bert, if you're familiar with the building, you know that it, it doesn't really have storm enclosures on the outside. Okay. Okay, Ben. So we're going to change the answer to no there because yeah. you. That's fine. Yes, if you need me to do it, let me know. Okay. And we can do it. Okay. Any other questions from the committee? Nellie, um, do we have anybody from the public? I have a question. Um, okay, go ahead, Tweet. If this is new construction, does that mean the floor plans, uh, like when is this going to be complete and built out? So we're planning on opening... Uh, fall 2021, we are still a long way from opening. If you look at some of the pictures that we included with the application on page 19, it is- That's why I asked, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a completely blank slate. It's, a, it's, it's, it's just concrete right now. Thank you. And nobody from the public, Nelly? No, no one. Okay. Do we hear a resolution, a motion? I do. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Abstaining, present I, not eligible. I, okay. I, I abstain. Twee abstained. Okay. Thank you all very much. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, fifth new application is for 350 11th Avenue, which is actually an outdoor space in the plaza on uh, and uh, Hudson Yards on the 11th Avenue side of the plaza, um, southwest corner of the plaza. It's for a full liquor license. Hours are eight to 11, seven days a week, 250 capacity, 52 tables, 218 seats. There has been an existing cafe there, um, which had different hours and a different number of tables. Okay. And it was only a uh, beer and wine license. And it was only a beer and wine license. Right. Thank you. And, and we approved that, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. Um, and as Bert said, the capacity was radically different. That had 38 tables and 108 seats. Right. Can I get Max? Going? Yes, okay. Uh, good evening, CB4. My name is Max Bookman, for those of you who don't know me, although mostly everybody's face looks familiar here. Um, with me is Kobe Levy, who is also a familiar face to you, not as familiar as mine. Um, you met him for the first time last month um, for a different license application. Um, he's one of your constituents, one of your new constituents. He lives in Hudson Yards. Um, and if you haven't been to any of his restaurants, uh, you ought to go because they're really excellent. He's a, even though he may be new to you, he's a longtime experienced operator in this town. Um, he has a wonderful, uh, creative, uh, modern Indian restaurant called uh, Babuji um, uh, on 13th Street and 5th Avenue, steps from my uh, law school alma mater. Um, he also has uh, Lola Taverna, which is a Greek restaurant on uh, 6th Avenue in Soho. Um, he is no, uh, he is no, uh, I'm not sure what the word is. He, he's experienced in this industry. No stranger. That was the word. He's no, no stranger to this industry. Um, so here's the current application. Before I say anything else, I need to make a correction on our end. Uh, we got the numbers wrong. We got the occupancy wrong um, in what we submitted to you. It's less, much less than what we told you it would be our fault. Um, so it's 169, 169 is the max occupancy um, that we are applying for. Um, if you actually count the number of tables and chairs on the floor plan we submitted to you, it's uh, 38 tables, 127 seats. We're gonna try to get a few more tables and seats in there because as you will hear, um, this is a, a restaurant. And so we are gonna, uh, it's all gonna be uh, you know, seated uh, meal service. And so um, we want to get as many seats as possible. So a little bit of history, um, as Bert uh, touched on and Frank as well, this is the pavilion in uh, Hudson Yards. Um, it uh, was approved by your board for a tavern wine uh, license last year uh, to be operated by Rhubarb. Um, it didn't get open until after COVID began. And once it did open, it became uh, successful. Um, in no small part because it's one of the extremely few number of completely open uh, outdoor F&B restaurants in Manhattan. Um, so that was an interesting idea before COVID and uh, certainly become essential um, since COVID. So it's been so successful that the plan is to expand on it, make it better, make it more food focused and make it year round. So in service of that, there's a few different things going on. Um, one is that they're going to be building a temporary covering, um, either like a tent or um, uh, maybe uh, like a retractable roof, open on all four sides, but uh, provide some cover from the elements to make it comfortable uh, for people to sit there in the winter and when it's raining. Um, Number two is that it's going to the new license that we're applying for is a restaurant category license. So whereas the rhubarb space was a tavern category with a minimal food menu, uh, this is going to up the food 
uh, significantly such that it qualifies as a restaurant. And to that end, they're changing up the concept. Uh, Kobe's changing up the concept quite a bit. So they're gonna rename it. It's gonna be called uh, Sunset Plaza and they're branding it as a culinary market. So this is going to have four different food stations all in converted shipping containers um, that are gonna be ran on uh, Tesla batteries, um, different cuisines. So uh, a smaller version of similar concepts in your district and, in, and around Manhattan, like Italy or the Jose Andreas Food Hall. It's going to be different food stations that people can go to. Um, it may appear from the outside that these are these may be you know different vendors operating for the food stations, but in fact they're all going to be Kobe's people um, who are operating all of the different uh, food options. Um, uh, the food options may rotate as time goes on. Um, Kobe knows a lot of different chefs and there's a lot of interest in maybe having, you know, a certain chef take over one of the, uh, um, one of the, the food stands, uh, you know, for a week or a month or whatever to have a slightly different menu. Um, seated dining service only, no standing. So you're going to come in, you're going to get your food and you're going to sit down. There's no room for standing, no place like for standing. Um, be kid friendly and dog friendly. Uh, they're working on a kid's menu and they're working on a menu for dogs. Um, three meals a day. They're going to be open 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. Um, you know, real restaurant hours, uh, recorded background music only, um, no dancing, no DJs, none of that. Uh, Rhubarb had previously agreed to um, following the recommendations of a sound study that was submitted to the board office, which included a sound limiter on any outdoor well, it's all outdoors. So on any uh, recorded background music that there may be, Kobe's read that report and is happy to agree to the same um, stipulation that he'll follow that sound, that sound study. So I think I've said enough. Um, we are happy to answer any questions that the committee may have. I have uh, two questions, Max, Kobe. Uh, one, you said f four food stations. Um, the food is prepared in each of those containers. That's right. So there's like a, a whatever kind of kitchen you have prep is done there. That's right. Each uh, on our floor plans, we say that too. There's like we say kitchens one through four because they'll basically okay. be four different self containers. Okay, I just wanted a clarification. Kitchen is not someplace else. No, kitchen's not someplace else. The food. Okay, and also for me, more importantly, you described the uh, roof is you sort of hesitantly described it as temporary uh, and you weren't sure of the material, right. canvas or something other than canvas. Um, what's your hesitancy and why sort of, we don't quite know what we're doing right now. Uh, I'm not sure because because they're not sure yet exactly what the materials are. They have bid. Uh, they have uh, their conversations with different uh, fabricators, and they're you know they're looking at different ideas for what it's going to be. Um, so, uh, you know, what we can commit to, and you know what, what what is certain is that there will be some sort of covering so that uh, it can be comfortable during during all seasons uh, and all weather. The reason I said temporary is because it, it, it's not a, a, a fixed uh, permanent structure. Whatever they decide on is, um, is, a, is a temporary structure. Is it going to come down in good weather or is it going to be there all the time? Uh, a portion of it will be there all the time. So what they're considering uh, is a retract, you know, I think what they're most focused on is something that could be retractable so that in good weather it can open and in bad weather um, it can close. Because right. because the, the, the problem this community board has is the shed was supposed to be retractable too and uh, seems to be retracting uh, about once in a blue moon. Well, um, I'll remind this board, the shed was the only liquor license application at Hudson Yards that my office did not handle. Right. So I, I take oh, responsibility for that. <laughs> Max, given what you said well, about- oh, Max. Given what you said about seating, I wanted to ask you about two of your answers on page five, sure. where you answered no to Will the will applicant allow not allow standing space? Will service and consumption of alcohol be by seated food service? Well, the answer should be yes. So seated food service only, no standing. Okay. There are, and we put this in the application, there are 20, you know, there's a bar as well, and there's 20 seats at the bar, but we're not going to allow standing. We're going to have hosts, and we're, they're going to direct people to seats um, and make sure that nobody is standing. Okay. okay so and the new numbers now are the same amount of tables that Rhubarb had. 
seats a little different, but then same 38 tables. If you say so, actually, I should. I don't have that in front of me, so I don't know. Oh, what Max, you said you weren't sure about the numbers. Mm. You're going to have to get us numbers, um, you know, be by like the 25th. So we have some numbers in the South. That's not a problem. The 169 total occupancy limit we could commit to now, the, the no standees we can commit to now. Um, the number of tables and chairs that we have given are a minimum. There's going to be more. And so we can we can fix those that table and chairs number to what it's going to be and get that to you uh, in short order. Is this occupying the same footprint that rhubarb did? Yes. OK. Um, I haven't been able to get an answer to this, but maybe Inga or Christine remembers. Um, I remember when we had that big debate about whether the shed could have outdoor bars on the plaza that there was talk about forming some kind of Hudson Yards outdoor space advisory committee or something that was going to uh, try to comment on the use of the outdoor space. Does anyone know if that ever happened or am I off my rocker? Does anyone remember that? No, discussion? no, no, you're right. Uh, uh, there was as part, I think as part of the approval, mm -hmm. there was a concept of creating a Hudson Yard community, you know, outdoor community uh, council and I thought one of the discussion most recently with uh, with uh, the shed was or, or with was to reactivate that, but maybe um, Inge has a more recent update on that. No, no, no talk about it recently. They're just okay. trying to survive right now, and right. they're never going to retract the shed. <laughs> <laughs> What a scam. That public space is not public. Right. What a scam. Well, they claimed it. Their argument is that it is public. All you got to do is buy a ticket to an event. <laughs> and anybody in the public can buy a ticket. Anyone can buy have the money. a ticket. And then you can go into the public space, but you right. cannot go into the public space. And you can never see the sky. It's not an open plaza, and it never will right. be. Right. No, Inga, the zoning provided that that plaza is open to the sky even when the shed is deployed. So the city ruled that so you can see the sky when you're in there. So the open space committee was only a concept and it never evolved past the conceptual stage. And yeah, I think very limited staff at the shed now. They, I mean, this summer um, at one, our earlier board meeting, we let some people go. And then during the middle of the summer, we let go almost 90% of the staff, so. You're still on the board, right? I am. You're our representative on the board, or? I am. She's not paid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paid and uh, I can't vote for, for, for executive matters. So a lot of what happens during the meeting is just presentations and discussions and I try to get wow our point of view in and then they go into executive session and the rest of us have to leave. Oh, great. <laughs> Very inclusive. Right. Um, any further I comments, questions? questions? I have questions. Okay. Tweet, go ahead. So I'm looking at the um, floor plan that you referenced us several times on page 11 to 17 of the PDF I received. Could you please walk me through a little bit of it? Are these green circles the proposed coverings. Let me get up my color yeah. version. I printed out a black and white version, so I don't know what's green and what's not. Well, I mean, they're circles, <laughs> so it doesn't okay. have to be color. I mean, I think what they did was they, uh, actually, I'm not actually sure. Kobe, do you know the answer to that? What the green circles are? I don't think they're supposed to mean much of anything. Maybe they're umbrella, they, maybe they're umbrellas when, for when the, the roof no. is up. Those might have been. Those might be the existing uh, tree planters, or I'm, I'm looking for the same thing because I don't have That's any green. They look so like they look, look like planters. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, there's, there there, as, you, as I'm sure you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of trees and planters there. So, and we, okay. we, we will we expand. We, we do plan on having a lot of trees and a lot of planters because part of the idea here is to make this very mm -hmm. soft, floral, and engaging, and very stark contrast to the steel and glass that that is uh, that surrounds that. But does that mean how that those- you, How do you uh, make that consistent with a canopy, with a roof? Uh, what you just I, described, Kobe. 
Well, one, so when you walk in, the, the how we're going to demise the space is actually using hedges. And well, so let, let me just say, let me just say this before Kobe says anything else. It's, it's a, t I mean, it, it it's only going to go up. You know, the covering's only going to go up in bad weather when it's really cold. So, I mean, you know, it's, you can still have plants uh, that, you know, have light, access to the light. The idea is for it to be as open as much as possible. Uh, and if, if you guys have seen what I did at Lolo Taverna, I have a company that I work with called Floratorium that does a beautiful job. And what we do is um, we use uh, real stem, we use real branches, and then in, com in combination with uh, silk flowers to create unbelievable architectural arrangements on top of uh, and intertwine that with the live plants that we have as well. So there's a, there's a mix of both. Um, and again, if you look at what I built on my temporary structures at Lola, the reason that we're, one of the reasons we're doing so well is that uh, they are striking and beautiful and, uh, and they do offer uh, they do offer a little bit of a, a transportive uh, experience. Okay, I still need clarification on this floor plan. However, I for comparison. My question has to do with if those are existing planters, does that mean they'll be removed for the additional seating? No, I think, I mean, what I think now that I'm looking at the circles, I'm getting it more. I think what they meant to, you know, to, to convey is the circles are the, the spread of the tree branches. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the dots in the middle of all those circles would be the actual tree trunk. So you could put, uh, you can keep the trees, you could put the additional seating next to the tree trunks and then have coverage of, of the tree branches uh, so you can get some shade. That, that, okay. that's, now I'm looking at it. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, because there were in a, in a, in a bottom southeast quadrant, I guess, is like little dots that looks like umbrella proposals there. There are two of them. Is that what's yeah, happening little, there? Or is that little dots are, yeah. Hey, real quick, what page are you all referring to? I, I, I can't find where you're at. On page 11 of 17 of the PDF. Twee, you're right. The spider webby thing is, those are, those are umbrellas. So they're current umbrellas right now? Well, right now, oh, it, I don't it, Kobe doesn't have the space right now. Right now it's rhubarb. So I, I don't okay. know exactly so what's proposed? happening right now. So that's proposed then? That's right. You know, okay. if you, on, on occasions when, you know, when, when it, when the roof, the retractable thing is down, which will be most of the time, uh, you know, they'll have some umbrellas there for, you know, not everybody wants to sit in the sun. Inga? I, I still have a, a more a question. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Tweet. Um, so what I heard was with the four squares, kitchen one, two, three, and four, they're like, um, what do you say, rail cars, you go in. Shipping containers. Yeah, they're like shipping, shipping containers. containers yes. yeah. So then there's that long rectangular bar. Is that also like a shipping container where people order and then they walk away from it? There's not That's seating the under there, right? So let me just, just to make sure we're clear. So the four shipping containers that are the kitchens, the only people going into that are staff. So it, you know they, they're gonna be cut open with like a window counter so people can walk up, order their food and then uh, go to, back to their seat. Uh, the bar, I don't know if it's gonna be s similar to the shipping oh, wow. container material or some other material, but it, it'll be a, a uh, standard bar with 20 seats at it that if you want to sit down and have food and drink at the bar, you can. Okay, so the 20 seats under there. Yeah. Okay, and but, then but no stand, no standing at the bar, right? So we're clear. Yes, yeah, so you just sit down at the one of the twenty seats, or you walk away and sit at one of the benches. That's right. Um, okay, so then with the photos, um, is this going to is this going to be operational in in the winter or in, or soon? So the photos are current photos, or at least they were current a month or two ago. Uh, you know, they're, they're what rhubarb has or had set up there, um, as is photos. Um, we hope to be operational as soon as we can get a liquor license. So does, so my question has to do with um, heat lamps. Is there like leeway for heat lamps? They are, they are going to use heating elements so that people, just like all the other outdoor dining is doing, so that people could sit comfortably in, in the winter. Although, you know, by the time they're, you know, frankly, by the time they're ready to open, um, it, it's probably not, or at least by the time they have a liquor license, it's probably not going to be so cold out. So you're not going to really see heating elements until uh, winter, uh, you know, the cold months of 21, the end of this year. Okay. Yeah, because one of the photos had three of page three or five of the photos had a trailer that said women on it. Was that- Yeah, so that's, to... sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off to it. Yeah, I mean, was that supposed to be um, a bathroom or is that part of like a set? 
Yeah, so that's uh, so rhubarb has a bathroom trailer, one of the nice bathroom trailers, like what well, the nicest version of a porta potty you could order um, uh, to satisfy the ABC laws bathroom requirement. Um, Kobe will also have on premises bathrooms. If it's not this exact trailer, it will be some other uh, similar structure. The photo you see is what rhubarb currently has there because your board wants uh, as is photos of the premises. Okay, so those are the trailers that are reflected in the map. The exact same. Those are those are bathrooms. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, Kobe, are you keeping the? I guess we can make this easier. Are you keeping that exact trailer that rhubarb has? You're going to get a different one. No, we're getting all new everything, and that they were adding, and we're adding bathrooms. I could tell you, Tui, just you know, having done the rhubarb license application, the position that the trailer is in in the photos that you're looking at is the same area that Kobe's bathrooms will be located at. What you just heard Kobe said is that he's going to get a different bathroom trailer. So it's not gonna be the exact same one you see in the photos, but that's you know the, the general area where they're gonna be located as reflected in the floor plan. Okay, thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Inga. My question was on the bathrooms. There weren't enough. Um, <laughs> right now it doesn't matter. Um, I was just there recently and I did not, I wouldn't go to any bathroom right now, but there weren't enough when it was still viable. Um, we, we hear you. Um, and Kobe, I don't think he's actually bought the bathrooms yet that he's going to use. So he'll keep that feedback mm -hmm. in mind. Shrubbery around those would be lovely. <laughs> yeah. right. Some lilac bushes. I don't know something. Or Robbie's uh, waving. Robbie's waving. Yeah. Does yeah, hey, I'm sure that I, I, I must be missing documentation. I have a 45 page document and another um, 11 page document. But um, please describe to me exactly where this is going in at. Uh, I'm looking at a map. Uh, where about in Hudson Yards? Are you off of 10th and 30th? It's exactly, on the where, side? It, it, it's exactly where the rhubarb uh, place that you previously approved. I don't know what it's same exact me. Tenth and, uh, Rob, 10th and 30th is our next applicant. They're on the 11th Avenue side of the plaza, the southwest corner. Right. Isn't it right in front of the vessel? Yeah, it's just or it's just on the other side. side. It's yeah. west of the vessel. On the what, other right. Side. West of the vessel. West side, yeah. yeah. It's full west of the vessel. Wow. So it, it, it's that open public space right by where the road is. Right. Yes, public, 11th public, Avenue. Quote, okay, okay. <laughs> I, did, I, I just wanted to know. Okay, got it. Thank you. What was that quote unquote, Christine? I didn't hear that. Public. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, you have no live music, right? No, no live music. Thank you. What were the stipulations for the background music from the last applicant? Brian, the stip was that um, Rhubarb would commission a sound study after the BLP committee meeting um, and submit it to the full board office and agree to follow the recommendations of the sound study, which way they did. The major recommendation of the sound study is that they would install a limiter that would keep the sound to a certain decibel amount. Um, I don't have the exact decibel amount. I think amount it was 74 it, max. But it was low. Um, that was the major takeaway of the sound study, and um, that's what uh, Kobe is, you know, will follow as well. Uh, Brian, and the prior step was to get an acoustical report to ensure there's no music leakage beyond the perimeter of the uh, establishment. And if you read the acoustic report, that is what they, they tried to do. And Kobe's yeah. establishments are not music and heavy, Christine. and this is not going to be a very music heavy place either. Right. So one more comment. Um, the I doubt we'll have a problem with the music based on his other establishments that I've been to. And Hudson Yards right now has an outdoor gym in the sort of middle northwest side of the plaza that blasts their bicycle music. It's outdoors. There are at least I'd say 60 bikes and a DJ and nothing could be as loud as that. So hopefully they're not doing that while you have the restaurant open because it's obnoxious. Yeah, those are the soul cyclers who have, they've, they've gotten outside, but they're still on stationary bikes. The next they, step will be they go on real bikes. and Yeah, they've taken uh, over the public plaza. Okay, cool. And the so, sound. Christine. 
Yeah, so I'd like, you know, I, I hear what you're going to do and that sounds really good. Uh, you know, I'd like like a stipulation of the fact that there will not be any enclosure on the sides. That's uh, not a problem be, at all, Christine. Right, so if you, could, uh, if you could stipulate to that, that would make me very happy. That's yeah. no problem. I mean, again, part of why this is a good venture during COVID is because of its outdoor nature. So Kobe's right. not gonna do anything that would jeopardize his characterization of the space as outdoor dining because you know uh, despite optimism about the vaccine it may be a very long time until these restrictions are lift lifted wendy did you want to say something oh, no, I, I see, in the corner of my eye i thought i'd seen your hand up any other comments questions from the committee Anybody else out there, Nelly? No, no one. Motion to approve. Wait one second. So wait, wait, we got some stipulations here. Yeah. But also, Bert, um, my sense is we're going to get a lot of questions about the enclosure at full board. Yep. And I don't know about you, but I don't feel I can, I don't feel we have enough information to answer them right now. Um, Max and, and Kobe, I mean, people are sort of going to want to know you know, what this is, is it how, you know, is it only going to be there when it's raining and be below a certain temperature? What's it? Made you know, let, me, let, let, let me, let me, let me put you guys at ease a little bit. Cause I don't want there to, there's no like, uh, we're not hiding anything right now. What's happening is um, we have, we're just, we're, we're going through the bid process between using glass and a very heavy vinyl. So one way or another, it's a, the structure itself is a steel structure. Um, and the idea is simply that it, think of like, a very nice wedding tent that has mechanical that has a mechanical option to retract the sides, sorry to retract the roof. So let me let me make a suggestion on that. Is like I, I'm sure your vendors have a visualization of those things. It would be tremendously helpful to include that in the package, the visualize one or the other because it doesn't make a big difference. So I just didn't. I have di I have options from everyone. I didn't want to confuse anyone by showing you one photo and then have it be the other photo, but I can, if you want to see what the options look like, they're all using the same general idea. I think I, Kobe, I it's, see. it's important for people to visualize rather than to imagine through words, oh, it will be da 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 and retractable, not retractable, yeah. open sometimes, close. People want more specifics, even if it's, we're not sure, but it's going to be either A or B. Um, Bert, that's, yeah, that's thing, fine. There's going to be a lot of issues. I imagine if people are awake at the full board uh, about the use of public space and about the covering. Those are going to be your two issues coming up. Bert, that's fine. You know, I've seen the renderings. I think they do um, clarify a lot of what, about what this is. The only reason we made the decision not to give them to you is because we haven't settled on a final one. So we didn't want, you know, uh, to give you this and then we'd build this way. And then you say, well, you showed us this, how come it's not that way? So if we give it to you with the understanding that this is generally what it's going to look like, the concept, we're not going to depart from the concept, the specifics of how it's actually built might, uh, might change. All right, but if you have multiple vendors, you can feel free to send us. We yeah. will, and we may not use any of them. We may, you know, use an, ah. another one. I mean, you know, so, but, you know, but I think they're, they're all very similar in kind. And so when we show them to you, I think the full board will have a good understanding of uh, of, of what we have in mind. Okay. You have, these are going to be questions that are going to be thrown at us. And as, as we present our recommendation. Okay. Understood. Then, we'll, we'll, we'll help you. We'll help you out. And then with the proposed glass or vinyl covering, does that mean those little two corner umbrellas sort of go out of the picture or are they are like vestigial? They stay there and it, it really will go covers a main space? I would think that when the when the covering is up, the umbrellas come down. The umbrellas are really just um, for when the covering is down and they we're open to the sky. If not everyone wants to sit in the direct sunlight, they may want to sit under some shade. They're gonna be easy enough to take down. Sorry, sorry if I'm being really thick. I'm just trying to figure out what is the, this covering attached to? Like, I, I I guess I'm a little confused. We should have, we <laughs> should have done the Is it something that you pick up and you, oh, you walk away? Long or? Long I think what you said, Kobe, are the structure holding up whatever the canopy is a metallic metal if you guys guys if you want right now i can answer 
do you want to let me share my screen? I can just show you. Yes. I can show yes, you a rendering. Please. Yeah, because I should have. So we should have shown them to you. If the manager could just let me share screen, I can just put it up on my screen. Thank you. That would be helpful. Good. But, but as Kobe's doing, the host just, do, the host as, just as, needs to. Yeah, yeah. yeah as Kobe's doing that, I'll second. just say, I'll just say to Carrie, um, you're not being thick. The renderings really help. Um, but it, but as Bert said, it's like there are some. There are like poles on like on on a few sides that the thing like folds out of sort of, but you'll see in a minute. Like sun sheds over cars in a parking. <laughs> it's like you have poles and you have something on the top and you put your car under it so it doesn't take more shut the sun. But then if you retract it, is that retraction like going down the side and that creates a, a wall, no, like a no, side wall? No, no, what it does is that it, it, it does kind of very fold, like you would have an awning. It yeah. falls to one side. It to itself. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Nelly, I need you to I need you to allow me to to share. Oh, there we go. Got it. Uh, hold on a second. Don't you miss the old days when we could just walk up to the table and show you a piece of paper? Pass <laughs> it around. Yeah, and everybody would everybody would stand up and go around one person. Well, we pass it around, you know, <laughs> better than this. Okay, guys, now this show on. Let me let me again. This is not nothing here is final, but let me just show you what this is. Okay, let's see if you can see this. Everyone, see the screen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so as you can see, it's a structure, and then the top part. This, this part retracts on the top. Obviously you don't see the rest of it, but this is just, they just gave me a rendering just of the, yeah. of the tenting structure from the top. Right. So as you see open on the sides and then as it comes over the top, you'll see which part can, uh, can retract. Right, oh, that's great. So those can close, they'll, but they'll always be clear to the sky. Bert, would you folks want a, you know, some, some screenshots of this? I mean, so for the full board, would that, a good idea yeah. in advance or yeah absolutely I, okay. I think it will help honestly <laughs> okay mm -hmm. any other question this one's by the way so this one's round this one is for for, for this one only can accept tarping if it if we want to use glass it has to be peak but, these are all th my problems and this is not meant to represent anything else so if you start counting the tables it's not accurate I mean, no no we're, else, not, we're, not, just, just we're not interested in the table count right now conceptual okay <laughs> Don't worry about that. I, I can send that rendering with That's my job to worry. <laughs> hey, this is Rob. I got two quick questions for y'all. Um, one, is this going to be somewhat of a concept like uh, over in Bryant Park, how they have that outside uh, bar? I think it was presented by Southwest. It, it had a few um, non-permanent structures where the bar and kitchens were, and then it was just like open air with a bunch of nice plants and such. Um, I, Kobe, you want, you want to take that? I don't, I don't want to make the wrong comparison. I mean, you know, uh, I, 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 I know that this is probably a lot more. Okay. I'm never mind. I, that one. Okay. Uh, the other thing is I was under the impression that the area that you were going to, um, once Hudson Yards West was completed, was going to be the bridge over 11th Avenue connecting the two spaces. What's going to become of it once Hudson Yards West opens? I don't There's know anything no about that. There's no concept of bridge in the project, Robert. Oh, okay. I, I for There's some no reason I thought whatsoever. under the impression yeah. it was elevated that height uh, because they had uh, intended on putting like a, a pedestrian bridge yeah. over Eleventh Avenue to connect uh, Hudson Yards east to west. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Okay. I'm bad. Uh, thank you for explaining that, Christina. I just read that recently too, Christine. The bridge concept. So just that yeah. rendering that we were shown, is that the entire space or is that just a portion of the space? It's an example. Okay. It's an example on, on a place which is not even that space. So it's like totally conceptual. Okay. Um, I did have one additional question. This has to go to the security. I saw that they said that there'll be security being used in that open space? Does, is that Kobe, true? Did, is, did we get that right? I don't think so. No, hold on. I, what, I, what I wrote in there was that there is 
state certified related, personnel? Re, relate now related has has security throughout and, if, and for those of you who go there there's always i guess it's a high value target as i live there there are constantly police and the like ter anti-terrorist squad are there we we're don't not going to have, have any, uh, security yeah. we're not going to have there's, security it's there's no bouncers uh nothing like that and if we said anything to the contrary in the application that's not correct it could be there well, is a police because you are so important you know they don't come to our streets because we are not important <laughs> So when it says, will state certified security personnel be used, that means the NYPD or the security from related? Related. No, no, no. If you, on the one, I, I wrote, I wrote no, uh, Hudson Yards has a security. Kobe, 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 let me answer it. Kobe, let me answer it. The, the answer is our, our premises is not going to utilize security. There is, as Kobe said, related employees, private security in the Hudson Yards area. That's what we're referring to. Um, you know, the, the NYPD is allowed to go around there just like they're allowed to go anywhere else, but there's no bouncers, there's no security as part of our method of operation. So I think the answer to the question Twee just raised really should be no, not yes. Will state certified security personnel be used? <laughs> yes, if, we said yes, then, if we said yes, then we should say no, because okay. I don't want to give yeah. a misimpression. Right. Okay, because, yeah, because it relates to um, the previous question of there will be corporate events. So does that mean and at that time you will have personnel or not because if it's an open space how do you really contain a corporate event no we may just like just like in, in most applications that come before you uh the, the applicant may from time to time uh do a buyout of the restaurant where uh where it, it it's a buyout um but it's not going to you know that's not going to depart from any of our stipulations and there's not going to be the type of event that requires uh you know private security for so so for example if uh Who's out there? If Deutsche Bank, um, you said a buyout, so if they buy out the space, then it's up to them to say to people, this is a corporate event, it's not a public space anymore. What I mean by a buyout is like any restaurant, they are free to rent use of the space uh, for a private function. So uh, if, in a, you know, just like you could book a table at a restaurant, if the function is large enough, you may, a restaurant may have a private room. Uh, if, a, if the function is large enough, uh, the, the restaurant may shut down to the public for the night and uh, be completely sold out for a large function. Um, every applicant uh, tells you that they'll do that a few times a year. Um, and Kobe intends to do the same as well. That's all we meant by that. Nothing special. Well, that's, well right, that's how it generally works. But if, if this is an open space, you can't have a private. So how how do you not have just related security to the properties take care of that, or does well, the this, person? I mean, even though it's an outdoor space, it's not open in the sense that it is borderless. So in order to meet the ABC laws requirements, we have to make a clear perimeter of the premises that indicates where the premises begins and where the premises ends and have clear entrance and exit points so that people can't just, it's not an amoeba where people can just come in and, and enter and exit wherever they please. Um, Kobe's going to, to do that through the use of planters. Um, and so to the extent that there is a night where there is a, uh, a buyout, um, it'll be clear where people can come in through, where people can come out through. Um, and uh, you know, that's how, it'll, that's how it'll work. Okay, thank you. Right. Frank, would you hey. want to, unless there's other questions I have one or comments? More, just one more question. Slash okay, question. Inga. So this is not a public space anymore because we're allowing a restaurant to take it, correct? Well, look, I'm, I'm not a land use attorney, and so I'm not here to tell you what this space right. is supposed to be or not. But what I will tell you is that just like with the related uh, cafe, excuse me, the, the rhubarb cafe that you approve. Um, this is going to be a liquor licensed premises. And, you know, as such, uh, it'll be in the exclusive possession and control of the licensee, which in this case is, is going to be Kobe. It's open to the public in the sense that anyone is free to come in and, and, and eat there. Um, but, so but it's not a park. Frank, question regarding public, and Christine, question regarding public space. This is not part of the public plaza, this section. Correct. It's. I've been trying to get an answer to that, and I have not been able to. So my only question is, and and Twee just made a point of it. If it, if if it is public space, but we're leasing it to someone or letting allowing them to use it, 
should we limit the number of buyout days they can have a year or we will potentially never ever it could become completely private it could become buyouts every day and the public can never use it i mean inga i think the reality is that that space is not public anymore that's what i'm thinking i just wanted yeah. to make sure it's and I not think public i Vaguely, I don't know whether I'm remembering clearly, but I thought at a point of time we had made a point about getting keeping some table and chairs to be open to the public. I thought so uh, too. So that people don't have to pay. Correct. And but I don't recall exactly. Uh, uh, Frank, is that in the steps of last time? It's. I dimly recall that too, and it's not in the steps. So I don't, I don't know if I was confusing it with another space. Well, I know we've no. done in the parks too, like in Hudson Yard, the Hudson, the Hudson River Park. We've asked that they set aside at least part of the day when they're least least busy um, to let people just sit there and bring their lunch or have a soda and not buy dinner. So I don't know how this is public or if it's absolutely not public anymore. Should we ask for, you know, a couple hours a day where people can actually just sit down, even if they're not a patron? I don't know if we can do that here. Well, I mean, one, one thing that I, I can tell you is that, you know, I under, I know, again, I'm not a land use attorney, but I, I understand that related position because they've conveyed it to me is that they have the, the right to lease this space to Kobe, just like they did with with rhubarb before it, which your board approved. Yeah. Um, so Kobe's going to have a lease for this space. Um, you know, whether there are members of this committee who feel that that is not appropriate. It's not, it's you know, not public. Yeah. yeah I, I don't I mean, I'm not here to comment on that. I don't think the SLA um, really is interested in focusing on that either. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't think the space is public. Um, no. it, you know, it, it is it is a leased space that's going to be a restaurant. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, though, is that and I don't know if this is directly responsive to any um, uh, any back and forth that happened with rhubarb last time, but um, uh, rhubarb's initial plan was to have a much broader footprint that was on both sides of the stairway that you can then go down to. Um, when they actually built it, they only kept themselves on one side of the of the stairway, and on the and on the other side, there were related did have um, you know those little you know park tables and chairs mm -hmm. like you see in Bryant Park oh, and stuff. Um, and so. Uh, I, you know, that's not Kobe's least space. So I, we can't promise you what related is going to do with that space, but that, that was the, that's how they did it with rhubarb is that there, you know, there were these open right. little <laughs> tables that you could sit at. Okay. Thank you. Um, real quick. I just want to clarify. Um, you contacted the residential tower and uh, no one had any opinion. I know that we previously Sorry. licensed it to rhubarb, but I'm saying you yourselves have reached out to this residential tower. We reached out to everyone on the list that um, we were told to reach out to. Well, that wasn't the question. Sure. Yeah, the answer is not. Well, I don't know if the uh, residential the tower is, rep is on that list or not. I'm not sure. Not. Um, Max, but, yeah. you've, you've heard me explain this a zillion times. That list is not a safe harbor. Um, you and your clients are supposed to know who is I, around. I, I, well, hold on, yeah, Kobe, let, Kobe let, let Frank finish. Around your premises and notify people accordingly. We don't know all the apartment buildings that surround every potential restaurant space uh, in, in the district. All right, Kobe, go ahead. L l luckily, I'm a resident of said building. And uh, I had, and I sent an email to, uh, to the building manager. And I also made sure that there were signs directly in front of the door, uh, notifying everyone in the hearing as well. So I, I did my part. Okay. On both right. on both sides of the door, fifteen and thirty-five. Good. Right. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad Kobe answered that because his answer would have been better than what I was going to say. Okay. So, a question: As a it resident was, of the it building, was a better answer. <laughs> so, Kobe, as a resident of the building, does that building have a tenant board or anything like that? No tenant. No, it's a condo. Oh, no condo board then. Uh, I, I believe related owns the con controls the condo board. It's so new. Mm-hmm. Okay, any further comments, questions? All right, so- Yeah, when they rent out the space, are gonna be having like DJ or anything? No, no, absolutely not, no DJ. Uh, background music only, and even if, listen, 
this question about renting out the space has taken on a life of its own. It's not something that we plan on doing with any amount of frequency. It's just, you know, we, uh, it's, a, it's a standard routine answer that uh, we always give because um, it's true from time to time, they may rent out the space. It's not the, the purpose or the function of, of, of this to be a, a rental space. But in, on the rare occasion that they do rent out the space for a buyout, if they're so lucky to get one. Okay. All, all the gotta, steps remain. Okay, we got to move on. We got to move on. We've got to move on. No DJs. Matters. Okay, uh, Max, to summarize, on page two, we're changing the answer about state certified security personnel to no. On page five, the questions about um, having to be seated for uh, alcohol consumption and no standing, we're changing those both to yes. And then we have the following additional steps. Applicant will adhere to all recommendations of Longman Lindsay acoustical report dated October 15, 2020. Applicant will submit numbers of seats and tables and conceptual photos of roof to MC before uh, office no later than January 25. There'll be no live music and any tent or roof will not permanently cover the outdoor space and will be open on all sides at all times. Yes. Good. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Rob? Nay. Okay. Uh, abstaining? Present not eligible? Okay. See Thank you at the full board. Thank you board. Guys so much. Good Thank luck. you very much, everyone. Thank All you. Right. And Kobe, what's the name of your dog? This is Prince. He was sick of sitting on the floor and chewing on my shoe, so he decided he had to get up. Prince, okay. Good night, Prince. <laughs> okay, we night, have Prince. one more applicant, 20 Hudson Yards, corner of 10th and 30th, Kisaki. Hours 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week, 10 tables, 50 seats. Hey guys, how are you? Thanks for waiting. No problem. I'm the last one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, nice to meet you all. Uh, we have a couple of restaurants in the city. We have one on Columbus and 74th. We have another one on Barry. We have a approved uh, license on John Street and Fidei, but we have not opened that up because of COVID. So this is basically a private dining experience. It's, I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with Omakasi, it's basically Chef choice. The chef, you know, fish gets flown from Japan about three times a week. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, a guest comes in and it's a 16 course meal uh, that lasts about two hours and 15 minutes. So it's a one, one seating every night? No, there's about, I would say, two. unusual three seatings. I mean, there's seat. now it's barely two. I mean, now there's no seatings. I mean, except the outdoor. Uh, right. Luckily, have outdoor seating uh, on Columbus and on Bowery. And uh, there's, there's two seatings. And on weekends, we do three at 4 o'clock currently. But usually, uh, there's a seating that starts at 6 I mean, there's a seating that starts at uh, 6, 5.30, I, my apologies. There's a seating that starts at 5.30, another one starts at 7.30, and the last one starts about 9.30. Uh, on the application, we just noticed we put to 11 o'clock, I think because uh, it's during COVID and you know the, the time jumps from 12 to 10. So uh, Dan, our VP is on, online with us too. He uh, accidentally, instead of uh, midnight, put 11 o'clock. So we just caught that on the call. Uh, he's not sure if he should put COVID times or not COVID times. No, it should be regular times. So yeah. what, what regular oh, times do you want? And the closing time is the time your premises need to be vacated of all patrons. It's not last call or last reservation. Yeah, no, I totally understand. And uh, I would say the the last one uh, starts at 9.30 and uh, uh, 11.45, everybody's out. So shall we say midnight? Good. Yeah, yeah, so let's say 12 o'clock midnight. Yeah. yeah. So I have a, a clarification. So you're going to be 
just uh, east of, uh, uh, of uh, Little Spain? Uh, I, I don't know where Little Spain is, honestly. Uh, it's Around right. Around 30 years between uh, 10 and 11. Yeah, uh, it's, it's indoors. Are you? You're, 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 you're in the mall, yeah. right? Yeah, we're in the mall. We're on the second floor. Oh, okay. you're in the mall. Oh, yeah, got it. Okay. Yeah, and Little Spain is the, the street yeah. floor of the mall. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was... Oh, oh you're yeah. talking about the Spanish uh, downstairs. Yes. Downstairs. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're on the second floor. This used to be a place called, I think, the drugstore. It sold, yeah. like, juices and... Yeah, it was, it was like they were supposed to get a liquor license, but I guess they never had experience, and they just sold mocktails, and they went out of business. And we're basically just taking over that bar and resurfacing the bar, doing a little bit of a interior work. Uh, but the electric, the plumbing, majority, everything is already ready for us. So it's at the top of the elevator. Top of what? Sorry. Of the elevator. Of yeah, the escalator. Escalator. Yes, exactly. Yeah, right around there. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have no questions. We're asking for a full liquor license because, uh, you know, it's a Japanese cuisine and uh, a lot of Japanese whiskey uh, actually are paired with the sushi. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a place in the Hamptons. We have a, a place in Long Island City. We were just on the news. Uh, we were on people.com. Jimmy Fallon left a nice tip for our worker about our Hamptons location. I was actually uh, on Fox News on Saturday on the Kavoto show, uh, show talking about the uh, indoor dining uh, in New York City. And, uh, you know, uh, it's a pretty, you know, uh, good experience. Um, the liquor just gets paired with the sushi. So it's not like we don't have a liquor bar or anything like that. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, reservations only. So you would have to book online and uh, it's a hundred dollar deposit for reservations during dinner, lunch. Uh, there's no really reservations. It's, uh, I mean, there is res res reservations, but uh, uh, lunch, there's more a la carte. Uh, there's more pickups. Uh, you know, you could pick up a, a, a sushi a meal as low as, I don't know, $15 a box. Okay. <clears throat> All right, that sounds good. Any questions, comments? No. Uh, motion. Uh, it's indoors, no issues, motion, motion approved. All right, we should check. Second. Nelly, anyone from the public? No, no one. Okay, Second. so the only change is making your closing hours midnight every night. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor of Brian's uh, motion? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstaining? I President abstain. eligible? Okay. I, I abstain. Tui abstains. Okay, and you understand, Gary, that this now goes to the full board in February? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you all, and uh, have a great night. Yeah, good luck. Good thank luck. You. Good luck. So we have one more item on the agenda. That's a discussion of the proposed draft, the draft letter that we have on permanent. This is addressing the issues that once COVID is over and in the rear view mirror, as they say. And then we have outdoor dining on a permanent basis. We have sidewalk cafes again. These are some of the parameters and propose that we might want to look at. Just a couple of nitpicking issues. Could you speak up, Mike? Yeah, just a couple of nitpicks by Mike. Of what? Nitpicking items. Oh, nitpicking. Nitpicking. Go ahead, pick the nits. Okay. Well, Terry Keenan, I'm beating you to the punch on this one because you instructed me when I made the mistake, and that is... Uh, with respect to uh, do ITT. So it is in fact do ITT, right? In a couple what line of are you? What line are you talking about? I'll start with line one. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> was 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 this, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Michael. Was the letter in the Dropbox? I didn't see it. I didn't see it either. I don't have the letter. Oh, it's, it's attached to the email. email. I only I saw, saw it's, it's attached, attached as a separate PDF, PDF to the email, email that Nelly sent today. today. That yeah. that who sent? Nelly. 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 Yeah, uh, this morning. Let me look. And then on line forty-one as well, it's there printed again. And I think that's it for that. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is on line 21. No, no, but wait, it's not D-O-I-T-T. -T, it's just D-O-T with caps, all caps. What? Department of Transportation, D-O-T. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, it's not D-O-I-T. It's D-O-T, Department of Transportation. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just my way of writing, Christine. I think um doesn't get a cap. <laughs> I don't oh, wow. have that either or as an attachment. Yeah, that, that, um, I don't. Wait, wait, we have a, a, a problem here. Sorry, guys. If everybody doesn't have a copy of the letter. Oh, yeah, it, was, it was attached like Wendy said. Nelly, Nelly, what don't I, I can send it again. I sent a few emails after I sent the first one. It's the yeah. very first email of the day that I sent to everyone. It's can you there. just resend it now? It, it was oh, sent to me one second. It was sent at 10.06 a.m. from Nelly. Yeah, it was a little confusing, but thank you, Wendy, for pointing it out I that it was it, an attachment. Yeah, there were just too many emails. Yeah, but, but Bert, yeah, 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 that threw me off. I'm sorry, that threw me off. It's D-O-T. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. The other minor point people can catch up to it when they get to see this thing. Uh, line 21, Bert. Second, I'm listening. Yeah, the second sentence that's uh, that starts only can one. It should be only one can, only one agency can. So move can to the after agency. Okay. <clears throat> right. Only one agency can provide. Okay. All right. And mm, let's see. No. I'll keep my mouth shut on the rest. Okay. Uh, Thanks for that, Mike. Yeah. But no, that, that you tricked me with the do I TT thing. We're just waiting to pounce on that. <laughs> it wasn't my intention to trick you. I know. <laughs> no, I'm trying to Those of you who have read the letter, or those of you who are reading the letter, <clears throat> can we address the general concepts and yes. the the process points, the, yes. the how we do it. One of the one of the big big issues here is involving the community board, which right now under the emergency procedures, community boards are not involved. So we're calling for involvement of the community boards. We're also calling for one agency to be in charge, which now you know they're all over the place and there's very little enforcement. Uh, we're also calling for clear demarcations for sidewalk pedestrian use. We're also saying if you have a sidewalk cafe, no street dining. If you have street dining, no sidewalk cafe, one or the other, not both. And we're also saying, okay, this is public space. Going back to two, pre two previous applications, this is real public space, not owned by related. This is real public space, street space. Okay. And we're saying there's a value here. And you're making additional money. Your property is now more valuable because you're using that street space that belongs to the people. So we want to be able to capture some of that additional value. We're not saying what mechanism it is what kind of tax, what kind of um, fee structure, whatever it is, there should be some way the city gets back some of that money that it doesn't only accrue to the landlord or the entrepreneur. Those are, I think, the major points of our letter. Yeah, yeah. Comment. Yeah, I think feedback from, from reading, reading through it is that it, it captures those points. points. I, think I think the, the biggest, biggest piece is, is 
This, this is going to be a long, long process of figuring, figuring out what this new agency could be, what are, what are the regulations. I mean, there, there are, are a lot, lot of open questions. questions. There's a lot, lot of, yes. um, a lot, a lot of, of, you know, know literally, literally figuring, figuring out how to share, share the sidewalks. sidewalks. And, and then how do you codify, codify that, that and, and what that process is. So I think, I think it's important that we just really underscore that, that more than anything, anything community, community boards should be part, part of the process. And to and the part, part that came up earlier, that Carrie brought up, you know, you know, we, we don't, don't want to be in a situation where everyone who has, has put up, up a structure right, right now is grandfathered into something in 2022. If that's Right, right. So... But, but I, think I think overall, it captures, it captures that. that. This is just, you know, you know putting, putting a stake in the, in the ground. ground. We know that we know, know that Sidewalk Cafe permits in 2021, but we, but we don't, don't want to be uh, caught by surprise, surprise in January 2022. My, My only um, nitpicky question, question would be line, line 30, 30, where we, where we say, um, where it, where it says, says that community boards should be included, included in the approval process for any outdoor, outdoor street dining structures, structures as they are now for liquor license applications. I wonder, I wonder maybe we should do it like this, but I wonder, wonder if, if it almost feels too prescriptive, prescriptive like, like we need to literally be approving the structure that a business puts up, up. Um, um, unless, unless that, that is what we want, want to do. do. But, but I don't know if that, that um, if, if that's, that's going to be, become part of the community board process that's, that's what, what we're suggesting so, so is, is it going to be like, like how, how we do with sidewalk, sidewalk cafes um that, that we look at the floor, floor plan and say yes yeah, this is where you're putting the tables do we want to be, be that prescriptive, prescriptive? In, which in which case i think, I think the comparison would actually be better to the way, the way we're involved in the current sidewalk, sidewalk cafe process so we, so we could just add that potentially because i think we want to give a sense that like yes we don't want this to be an we don't, we don't want, want the community, community boards to be involved, involved in an abstract, abstract sense, sense of like, yes, yes you, get you get a dining, dining structure outside. outside. We, actually we actually want to know what the plan is and how, how you're going to fit all these people in and, and all that. But I think, I think that's that was my only um, little, little piece of feedback. I, I have one. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Wendy. I well, think you call you, it a, I'm sorry, before before you go further, what, what would be the language you would suggest for that? I'm, I'm not sure I got to the end of your thought. Just, just to, to add, add in, in so where, where we, we currently, currently say, say um, <laughs> where, where community, community boards should be included in the approval process, process for any outdoor, outdoor street dining structures that they are now for liquor, liquor, liquor license, license applications. applications. And I would add, add in the inside walk out. Yeah. 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 Okay. You got that, Burr? Right. And Rob, if I didn't, I know where to reach Wendy. <laughs> Rob, can you mute, mute your phone? We're getting a lot of uh, feedback. I think it's coming from you. It's not me. Well, everyone else seems to be muted. I, I have been muted, Frank. I have. Huh. Okay. I do want to add something real quick. Line 64. Um, I'm not sure if people have noticed walking around uh, the area, but there are quite a lot of bars that as they're winterizing, they're outside, they're putting in electricity, they're putting in heat lamps, uh, like built into it, but they're also putting out speakers. I can't tell you how many businesses I've come across that the space in between their storefront and where their uh, patrons are outside, um, they're turning on their speakers to have music going out to those out areas if it's not already installed within these um, temporary uh, setups. That's all. I just wanted to add that in. And, and Rob, I'll add to that. I've passed a couple of places um, that have television videos yep. outside. In fact, one of them, I think, is probably in our community board district, right barely in. It's a south side of 26th Street between 6th and 7th Avenue. It has, in its street dining area, three big video screens. What, what is I that actually won that. Carrie, Carrie was waving her hands, right? I just had a quick, um, I guess, a friendly amendment. Is that how you say it? Um, it's, it's not a, we're all discussing this. A friendly. It's suggestion. coming all together. We're all putting this together. I see, I see. So that's next time we say friendly amendment. Um, the point about this being public space, I think is, um, is one of the most important points and maybe should be in the first paragraph. 
Yeah. And that is all I wanted to say. I think it's great. Thank you. I agree with that. I said public space up front. Mm -hmm. I have a question about. Yes, yes. Um, okay, what Inga was. was, was oh, sorry. okay. Hey, so I, I like the letter a lot. Um, I just walking around a lot and seeing some of these spaces, obviously, we all know that some of them are completely enclosed. Like, I could live there. Um, I don't know if we want to add that there should be more uniformity. And I only say that because some of them are, people are sitting six inches apart from other people, even in their own little groups. Um, some of them are completely closed up with no ventilation really. And if you have a bunch of different ones, it just, doesn't look good on the block if you've got like six different types of structures in the street some of them on ninth avenue um they are going into the bike lane but just they come over the curb and they've actually they're like a foot into the bike lane so they've have you seen those they kind of like just a little bit they kind of like l shape cut out over the curb and they're in the piece of the bike lane um I, and then if you go to 15th and 16th Street, the Chelsea, let's say Chelsea Market, for example, on 16th Street, they're all very uniform. They all, they have different tables in there, each spaces, they have different decorations and lighting, but the sheds themselves are closed on three sides only, they're open, and it's a nice uniform look, even though they're all different restaurants. It just, kind of enhances but, the but Hinge, I think I think that's uh, w the way we address that is by saying you have to have materials and plan which are standard right okay. now when they went out this time it's yeah, like so they told them just do what you want right right now so if they had a guideline right right if they had a guideline about these are the material this is the way it's is if there is a plan we're going to look that it's not then i think that's the way we address it yeah so yeah i think a more standardized look is better um otherwise i think it's an awesome letter the awesome is a bad word but it's appropriate here <laughs> i have a comment i agree awesome letter Three. um for line 27 when you say sidewalk cafe and open street dining dining guidelines should be merged and streamlined that seems to uh differ from what i heard on the call where if there's street dining there's no side of a cafe so this the, the merging and streamlining seems as though it would be both when you combine it so that has to be a little bit fleshed out. I think out. we should say sidewalk cafe and open street dining process and guidelines should mm -hmm. be merged not the uh, you know, because what we have now is the sidewalk cafe is one process mm -hmm. and one guideline. And then if they generate a new process and a new guideline for open dining, then we're going to have conflict between the two. And we're going to have, uh, you know, the applicants shopping between one or the other to go to the best one. Mm -hmm. So what we're suggesting is that they should merge those two processes. So what's your language there, Christine? I was saying, maybe you want to add to 27, sidewalk cafe and open stream dining process, approval process and guidelines. Approval yeah. process and guidelines. And should be merged and streamlined. But then we have to add what you're saying so as not to, so, so as to have only one or the other. That's what- Well, we say that very that clearly works. later on. There will be only one, right? Well, why later on? Why not here? Because there's a certain logic. Okay, I'll look at it. Okay. Okay. Bert knows what you mean. Hey, Bert, one, one more. Sabrina. One, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Mike. I just, I, I guess I want a clarification. Um, I read the letter, but are we suggesting that, let's say, restaurant A is not complying uh, with um, the space with um the stipulations are there already been say by the city and they're using not sustainable materials all of these things um are we going to go tomorrow and say hey you need to 
comply with A, B, C, D, E, or this is for the future? For the future. Right. Post right now, everything is an emergency. Yeah, that, that, that was A lot of it is self-certified. Because right now, as much as I love rules and regulations, um, no, yeah. our city dining is dying. And um, I don't think like somebody who spent um, X money in something, we should no. be just say, hey, take that off because A, B, C, D. I mean, obviously nothing that is too crazy should be allowed, but you know, as a, my concern in, in, at least in our district, um, it seems like it's okay. And there's so little restaurants opened. Um, mm -hmm. No, this is for the future. Okay. When, the, just, when the emergency you know, I, I passes. I am all about, um, this as long as in the future and not now. Post yeah. oh, I, just want to I mean, when I walk, I just want to say something. When I walk on the street, like when I pass that place on 26th Street, which will remain nameless, not only did they have the, the videos, the three videos out there, they were, they had exactly what was a Rob who said, they had music open from their windows. It's, and I just smiled and I said, this is not right. And it is right. Oh no, some not right because of the the rules and the regs and the way we want them to operate. And it's right because it's a business and they're dying and they have to attract. And I just said, took a deep breath and said, it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. Let them go. Come back in six months. So we all do that, you know. That's what it is. So exactly, but they're not the only ones. I mean, there's a lot of other businesses doing the same thing and not just putting speakers in, but some of them, they, they make little cubicles for each table. And I've seen other people have like little monitors and stuff and screens uh, for the television or the game. I know this is only temporary, but once we get back to normal, I, I, we're going to be battling a lot of this stuff going on. Well, I mean, you're right. The transition is going to be a pain because people will have spent a ton of money to do things. Mm -hmm. And the city is going to tell them, ha, oh, just kidding. And people are really going to be frustrated. And, I, like, and yeah. we, do, we do call for, before we move to the next normal phase, an evaluation of what happened, okay, during the yeah. emergency. How did it operate? What was good about it? What was bad about it? Uh, what can we take, what did we learn from it? Before and I think Wendy, you said it's going to be a long process, right. a very long, pro long process, and a not an easy process because there's going to be a lot of struggle involved. Mean, require all of us to be part of that process. Not only as CD agency, but even individuals as well. You know, this is going to take all of us to recover our city. Yeah, I have another question. On, on that point, on that point. Um, we've got an attendee, happens to be a member of the board, uh, Leslie is here with a question, and uh, she's wondering whether she's, the public is open, uh, you open the public comments on this letter. Well, let's first finish with the members of the committee, because uh, Twee. Okay, I got, let me, let me add one more thing that I forgot the first time then. Okay. Uh, on uh, the very first line of the letter, line six, and it's, you do this twice. You talk about all year-round outdoor street dining. It should be endorsed year-round outdoor street dining. Well, the word all is redundant two places. Right? Don't need it two places. Trust me. If you want to say all year-round outdoor dining to get the point across, fine, but not all. Year-round is all. You know, I when I wrote that, I yeah. actually first had all year round, and then I took the all out. Good. Well, you were right the first. And I put it back in. No, it's redundant. For it. It's redundant. Really. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I said to myself, Mike. I said it's redundant all year round. But then I noticed my um, program that you know corrects your grammar. Yeah, yeah. Put it back in. And so I stared at it. Endorsed. Full year round, you know, if that's the con what you want to convey. You know. Okay, we'll right. go from there. Thank yeah. you, Mike. Uh, Twee? So the question had to do with um, page two, line 50, where consideration should be given to widening the minimum restricted area of the sidewalk from eight feet to 12 feet. What 
is the standard width of a sidewalk? Doesn't that vary? So 12, week, 12 feet might be really, really not a lot of space. I'll let you answer that one, Christine. Yeah, no, I mean, we're talking here about the pedestrian right of way. We're not talking about the size of the sidewalk. So how does, what does that mean? Well, that means that's the area, like when we approve of sidewalk cafe today, you know, it requires the measurement required that we leave, that the, the sidewalk cafe leaves eight feet of sidewalk clear for people <laughs> to walk on, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're talking about here. So maybe we need to change that sentence and consider it should be given to widening the uh, pedestrian right of way mm -hmm. from eight to 12. I think that, yes. So are sidewalks wide enough that a pedestrian right of way can be as wide as 12 feet is my question. Oh, yeah. yeah. So because the standard sidewalk width is 20 feet? No, there is no standard. Every avenue has a different one and every street has a different one. It's amazing. I mean, every everything is different. So, yeah, I mean, that's and, and the main reason we are saying 12 feet is because today, today, the uh, in the sidewalk cafe, the um, if there is a, a tree, a tree without a tree pit, without a, 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 with with a, a, a grate on the tree, as the uh, DCA, which is the the um, Department of Consumer Affairs, does not consider that it's an obstacle, which is indeed absurd, right? Because it's right in the middle of the right of way. So you have an eight foot right of way and you have an eight, a, a, a tree right in the middle. So one way to fix that is either to say, okay, the right of way is extended to 12 feet and there is a, a tree there, or we exclude all trees and we have eight feet, right? So here we are suggesting 12 feet, at least to open the discussion. But, and that measurement is exclusive of tree pits? So that sounds like it doesn't include tree pits. Well, we want it to be exclusive of tree pits, but then it will come back to that. Okay. Uh, any further comments, questions from committee people? Because it seems like there are some people in the public who want to make comments. I have a comment on the letter, um, but regarding the televisions, I don't see a problem with tele TVs being in these structures. Um, and I kind of like it. As long as okay. I don't see anything. We don't comment in the letter one way or the other. Um, Are we moving the panelists, the attendees in? Uh, Nelly, can you move some people who want to, in the public, want to speak? Yes. Thank you. I have one hand raised. One person. Okay. There's a couple Q and A's and a chat, so I don't know. Are you following the Q and A's? I leave that to somebody else. Really? I'll Maybe take a look at it now. I don't have a yeah. Q and A. Q and A. Okay. Bogosian. Oh. Leslie. Yeah. Leslie's being moved Maureen? into the meeting. Yeah, and Maureen Ryan. Okay, am I, am I Leslie and Maureen or? Ryan. Okay, Leslie, go ahead. Great, thank you guys. Um, I'm sorry if I missed the beginning of it. Uh, I just wanted to make comments of just some concerns that people up here in North Hell's Kitchen had. Uh, we understand the necessity that open dining and street dining were for COVID, but to make it permanent is a little disconcerting um, for a number of reasons. And I think you guys are hitting upon those reasons. One is that this is, this is public space, this is city space. Um, all of a sudden to make it private, I think is a little disconcerting, um, number one. Uh, number two is, I think the intention here is that we are helping restaurants out by doing this. And I think that's short-term thinking, um, that long-term it's gonna really hurt restaurants because what this is going to do and what the talk am already among real estate is, is that I think Bert, you hit upon it or someone did, that this is going to now give real estate or whoever the commercial space owners are a, 
able to say, well, we're going to charge more rent because now you get an, you get a space, you get an outdoor dining space, which is they don't own that space. And I know someone here said that, well, maybe there could be some sort of negotiation, like some of that goes to the city, whatever that is, it's still going to be passed on to the business owner. So the business owner that we are actually trying to help and protect is, is going to be hurt in the long run. Um, and uh, I don't mean to steal, I think CB2 had that language as well. So I don't mean to steal it from them also, but I, I do agree with that. And that's actually just the only two things that we had concerns about. Um, I'm sure your letter will, will address that, but I just think the real estate grab um, was uh, the big concern, just that to identify the unintended consequences and the unwanted results down there. Yeah, road. just one, one comment, Leslie. Yeah. The, um, private use of public space, every time a car parks on the street, that's a private use of public space. Absolutely, but it's not a developer. I'm not, <laughs> it's, it's I'm not, not a real estate developer. Who the person or the institution is that's using the public space, but that's a, a, a use of public space by a private individual. Absolutely, but I I, I agree. Unless, a, unless you know, there's a a meter there. Yeah, I was going to say that now. I mean, I mean, either it's a meter Open, or it's a overnight parking is a complete use of pr a public space by a private person. I, absolutely, I, but I think it's either a meter or a ticket, right? But I mean, for us, I'm surprised that we would be, and I I mean, you guys are good at letters. I mean, I know you're going to address this, so I'm not really that we would be giving over this to real estate and commercial. So e so you know. Um, I don't want to say willingly, but just, I think immediate, I understand, but we got to look five years, 10 years down the road, w what's going to happen when, you know, that, like I said, they rent it out. I mean, I, I, I kind of made the points and I know you guys are concerned about the same things we are up here. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily concerned. I just wanted to make that, those. But uh, I also, I just want to say, when you say we up here, I think the committee is geographically I'm sorry, we talked about this at the, uh, our block association. Okay. It, it what, came up on the I block association. It represents north, south, east, yep. west of the district. Uh, it was a block association, actually two block association uh -huh. committee uh, uh, discussions. Thank you. Um, did we, wasn't there somebody else, Maureen? She, yeah. she typed in a comment into the chat. Yeah. Do you want to read it, read, Frank? Sorry? Read you want to read it? I've moved uh, Maureen over. She okay. said she would like to. Oh, see Maureen you. is here. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you so Hi. much. I haven't seen your letter, but I, I, I took all the notes on what you just discussed. I just wanted to follow up on one thing that Bert just said. Yes, indeed, parking spaces are taken up by individuals, but not for months and years like a standing outdoor restaurant. So there is, I think, a little difference in that analogy. And then what I just want to mention is that I really do think the amplified music is a real issue. At times, I feel like I'm kind of walking through a carnival down any given street with the loud amplified speakered music. So I would love for that to be addressed where you guys feel is the right place in that letter so that it really lines up with what the sidewalk cafe um, rules are, because I feel like that's been a pretty good policy. And then lastly, um, across the street from where I live in Chelsea, um, I believe there's a, a business that's gone out of gone out of business um, and they may have the spring an abandoned um, you know uh, shed so to speak and so just what what will be done about those kinds of things moving forward is just a question good question uh, thank you I, 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 go ahead christine yeah the the no music we have a line which says no music neither in the outside structure nor nor from the open window of the establishment Maybe we want to add, you know, the sidewalk cafe guidelines are, uh, should be followed, something like that. Good sure. idea. Uh, and then what Leslie said on line 74 and 75, you're, you're saying the city in the long term should be able to share in the added value accruing to these properties by their use of public space. And what it looks like is we are saying we should increase the tax uh, you know, that, that should be through the taxes. But I think there is merit into saying, you know, we need to rent those space like the sidewalk cafe are rented 
and capture the money directly and cut the owner of the, the landlord out of the, uh, out of the loop. Right, and as Leslie said, give the operator the choice yes. whether to pay the money to get the space and not have it mm -hmm. act onto the rent whether they right. want it or not. Yeah. yeah, so I think those two, that sentence down there maybe tweaked a little bit to really let the operator pay directly to the city. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or the city collected from the operator. From the operator. Uh, right. Not Rather than be the operator as a yes. middle person. Yes. Yes. And remove the landlord from this equation completely. Correct. Um, so that the landlord would get no value whatsoever of the use of the public space. Yes. yes. Yeah, Bert, as I think about it, I think we may even want to consider taking a position on the sentence that right before that at 7274, where we say, landlords are thinking of raising rents. Um, I would prefer that we took some position that says they should structure this system so that's impossible. It's following up with, right, with right. what Christine just okay. said. I, mean, I think we put that sentence to just say, to just mean that it's already and, and, it, and, it needs to be, and the solution needs to stop it. Right, right. That they have already thought about that and they are already planning to do that. And by the way, I think DOT is very aware of that. So I, I'm, we are going to preach to the choir. Good, good. Uh, would you write up a, a new sentence there or an additional yeah. well, maybe phrase or Christine? Frank, Frank maybe you, you do that. And we can get, we can include it for the full board. Okay. Great. I'll, I'll write up In the utopian world, that money would go to the local community and not just into a big pot in the city. Yes. It would go to the community board budget. Just the community, the local community. It should go back to the local community that's being no, interested. I know, but then how do we define that? Who, 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 who will be, you know? That's utopia. I can right. tell you that DOT is thinking about that, is to say that if we were going to collect that money, it mm -hmm. could be used then for other street improvements. Mm -hmm. Well, we could say, and it's, it's something that, Right. It should, whatever the money is collected, it should not go into a, the general fund, right. the city's general fund to be used, you know, would get lost, but in a dedicated fund for like street improvements yes. or street furniture or yes. however we want to do it. Yeah. I like, yeah, a dedicated fund, mm -hmm. not to the general fund. That's a good idea. Thank you. Can can we go back? Uh, I thought um, Frank was going to touch on it. The sentence before that in line 71, 72, each midtown delivery, for example, generates up to 34,000 annually. That seemed to stick out like a, a so what sentence. I didn't really could see the connection as to why we're doing a random number in a random location, what that meant. It's not it's a random not, number. It's I the, think it's, it's, it's supposed ahead. to be talking about the, it's supposed to be an example of the value of this kind of space. I'll try to work that in when I yeah. rework it's the policy. Christine came up with that number. Well, yeah, we cal I calculated if you were going to pay for delivery space in Midtown from eight o'clock to, 12, to um, eight o'clock at night, you know, one parking space generates about $34,000 yeah. in revenue for the city. Want each Midtown delivery space or parking space then? Yes. Well, and then well, for what I said, delivery space is because that's the price paid by the delivery. Parking space, if the parking is free, no, it delivers, it generates nothing. But on the avenue, generally, these are delivery space and they generally are metered and they generally are uh, producing that revenue. I, it just was, was too vague for me and not really connected to, but if Frank's gonna work it in somehow, we'll yeah, get the right. Yeah, could do, improve on that. I think what we'll do is we'll come up with the, the revised letter. Yeah. And we'll circulate it around for everyone to see. But we can't really- You know, say within the next four or five days. Right, but and this is important. Kind of comment. Yeah, you can only send comments to Bert and me. Don't send them to the entire committee right. um, because it then makes the email exchange a public meeting and it really complicates things. Oh, right. <laughs> a non-public yes. public meeting. 
Um, was there anybody else from the public besides Leslie and Maureen? Yes, I have one more person. Okay. Neil? Hi, um, my name is Neil. Um, the only thing that I just want to propose, outdoor dining spaces do right now bridge a band-aid to all the local businesses that are failing, right? Like we're currently experiencing massive storefronts that are just empty retail spaces. And the culture and the energy and the life of New York is just being completely removed. Is there a way that we can use the public space in an intermittent way, legally, like with language that's to all the contracts with everyone that is operating with the licenses that are being approved so that they know that this is only very contingent and very specific to the current emergency that we're all currently ex like experiencing. So therefore we don't take away and make and create a future problem that we then have to fix and ratify, but we also don't hinder the needs of the current city and of <clears throat> our community. I, I think that that's, that's the biggest dichotomy I've been feeling in the city and like experiencing. A lot of people want things to thrive and a lot of people want things to be okay. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be okay until there's a full vaccine rollout or until there's a full safety net given to all of us so that we can go outside and be with our loved ones and go hang out with our friends in a, in a very safe way. How can we provide a safety net during this period of time so that when things get back to a new sense of normal or the normal 2.0 so that we can all exist and it doesn't have to be um, taking away from the public sector or the public or like the streets and like noise. Like we don't have to have like housing tenements and like people just out on the street because human behavior, they will just go out and just do things because that's what they wanna do. But we also wanna support local business and we also wanna support local community. And we also wanna keep everyone safe. And I think that that's the one thing throughout this whole meeting um, that I've been sensing, that's like the tension point. And finding a solution for that would be amazing. And I would propose having intermittent, long, like outside dining when in its safety codes, right? Three barriers, not not fully enclosed buildings, not apartments, not like igloos, like having like having like outside things that are allowed, but only allowed during this period of time. I think the city's already said it would be permanent. Right. So that's the basic issue we're getting to, which is, you know, people are are tolerating a lot of things now for the sake of these businesses. And what this letter is about is requesting that there be some orderly process when it's made permanent, which the city has already said they're gonna do. So, I mean, we're right with you with the tension in which we're trying to, no one, this, is, this letter is all about what happens post, post state of emergency. It's not in any way hampering businesses now, it's just, trying to think ahead and get a system in place for when it uh, becomes permanent as the city seems to want to do. And summer arrives and everything's noisy outside and no one can sleep because you live upstairs. So I'm, so 
there, there's always a solution, right? Like I, 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 I come from a background of lots of, I've always been forced with, to deal with lots of problems. There's always a solution. In, in the usage of public space versus private space and how it gets allocated and what gets, how it gets regulated, what are the rules that we can define now so that the future gets protected? Well, you? that's what we're trying to do with that's this what the letter, is. letter is give a framework for the future because currently it's not quite the wild west, whatever that means. Uh, there are rules and regs, but a lot of it's not enforced or enforced with only one eye open. Um, for lots of good reasons, because it's an emergency. And like Sabrina talked about, the, bis the industry is dying. So we have to work. And when the industry dies, it's a very core part of New York City. Yeah. What makes New York City special. Okay. Um, but we're, we're trying to create a framework within which we could have some rules have some regulations of the use of this public space going forward when the emergency is over. And, and we don't have all the answers. And as I think all of us know, as you try to come up with an answer, you're gonna find more problems that you didn't even think of in the beginning. All right, uh, we, could probably talk about, we could probably talk about this all night, but it's uh, getting near nine o'clock, so. Dinner time. I suggest we wrap things up. Thank so you. Brian's been eating all, all during the meeting. Okay. Thank you for staying Thank on. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks everyone for sticking around to, to talk from the public. That's appreciated. And yes. Thanks to the whole committee as always. Okay. Good night, everybody. And we'll send the letter around in a couple of days. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Be well. Bye.